Okay, we just had a chance to fully charge the car at the pool. It's showing 501 kilometers. See, yeah. Where is it? Yeah, there you go. Okay, another quick update. We started uh, the journey at 100%, approximately 500 kilometers. Now we've traveled only about 25 kilometers, but uh, it shows that it's dropped, um, well, 28 kilometers. So that's not too bad because we were doing kind of a lot of intercity driving, which uh, involved not only stop go, but uh, also kind of um, quite a decent bit of uh, high speed driving because there's there's a federal highway from. Subang all the way here and um, so that's 25 kilometers and it's gone down uh, by 5% right so not bad actually quite uh, decently accurate and if you want to extrapolate the range that's uh, I think quite representative of um, let's say the real world driving range in everyday normal driving Another short update. My uh, active cruise control is on. As you can see, we're kind of sitting in a, uh, no, not not so much a jam, but there was there was a bit of stop and go just now. <laughs> so this one seems to be moving a little bit. Um, I got to test the stop and go um, duration a bit longer. But um, basically, what's happening now is that. With regards to the lane keep assist, right, or or rather lane uh, centering assist, right, um, we have that switched on. But what happens is, if you are below a certain speed, now I don't know yet whether it's forty or fifty or sixty, but below a certain speed, the car doesn't keep the center of the lane for you. If you're above, I'm guessing 60, you know, um, then the car is gonna keep its uh, center lane. So let's, so now we're above 60, then the car is gonna steer for you. Whoa, 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 break, break, break. Anyways, um, that's a short, quick update. I'm gonna check it out some more. Okay, today we have a passenger in the Aura Good Cat. Um, it's a very important passenger, so we shall ask the passenger some questions. Um, Miss Passenger, mm? do you like this car? Yeah. Um, why do you like this car? Mm. Mm. Because? Because... Um. Okay guys, so, um, so we've just driven up to this ABB fast charger. It's uh, free according to my friend Marcus. Um, because they make the chargers. So it's a uh, I guess promotional marketing, getting the word and branding out, etc. So it's the electric vehicle fast charging by ABB, the future of mobility is electric and clean. More information on uh, abb.com slash my that's the charger you're gonna use right now. Okay, so let's uh take it out and see how this works. Open up the flap and AC DC <laughs> AC DC. This is the charger right here. 43 kilowatt hour AC, 50 kilowatt hour DC, uh, 50 kilowatt hour DC CCS. Yes, we're gonna use this one, okay? Because the connector looks the way it does. First, let's uh, see how do we do this. I don't know whether you guys can see the screen. It's just general information here. Let's cancel that. Okay, we're gonna use this guy. It says that connect. Let's pull this out. 
plug it in right there. Okay, connect this with the key. Charger is delayed until power is available. What's happening? Because it's it's charging up. The charger is charging up. Preparing to charge, setting up communication with the car. Okay, it's all plugged in. Maybe let's give it some time and we'll let's take a walk around this place. So this ABB kind of, I guess, um, factory is located in Sunway, just kind of next to, uh, so that's where Sunway College, Pyramid, etc. Lagoon and everything is on that side. Just kind of behind here, uh, after the junction in front here is uh, Monash. Uh, university campus so I think it looks like it's charging now all right so we're gonna get in the car and wait Fast free okay so while the car is charging at this uh, fast charger right? um, this ABP fast charger um, the car is currently charging at 50 kilowatts hour Per hour. Um, this whole EV thing is still new for me, so <clears throat> apologies if my terminology is all wrong. But anyways, so while the car is charging, I think uh, I can show you guys just kind of how the car looks like from the inside. Okay, I'm running this off the GoPro, so if the um, sound or kind of just too much shakes are happening it can be because I am not holding it still so this is your cockpit this is how the uh, aura good cat looks as you're driving every day now material quality is actually really impressive so this is soft touch now this dog cart is hot plastics it runs all the way down there but this again is uh, soft leathery yet leatherette maybe this I'm guessing it's not real leather at least not the whole part same on this side so generally speaking all the beige um, looking plastics on the dashboard till down here are spongy plastics the steering wheel is uh, it's actually good this is this is not scratchy this is not scratchy. This is scratchy. Now this one right here. This is uh, this kind of wrap. The sponge underneath is on this sections here. So this all feel really good and really soft to the touch. This one's kind of hard. I do have to say though, this is super impressive uh, quality here. Plastic as the Maybe I'm guessing, but um, very sturdy. Now, even this one feels good, just um, material wise. The uh, steering feels good. This might be real, not puff. This one, now because of the color, it's you know, you guys can probably see it to be black there already. But it does give the car a nice airy feel. This is the sun uh, roof. There you go. And you could open this as well. But um, let's see if we want to do that. There you go. But nope. My air condition air. Okay, so we'll get into another video on the, um, let's say just the, the head functionality of the software. But I would have to say, hardware wise, the just the initial kind of. Just the initial impressions, I've only had the car for, for a day now and um, the fit and finish is 
really good by any standards. The choice of material is very, very good, even by um, Japanese standards. Now, at least for a brand new car, the uh, with with zero wear and tear, right? So the choice of materials um, are up there with your kind of mid-range um, Continentals, I I think. Um, just not sure how it would wear over time, right? The plastics and the uh, I don't know, Alcantara on the dashboard and uh, just the leather, etc. Now we'll come to the back, uh, and this is how the rear door carts look like. So very nice, comfortable seats here. You've got your middle armrest. Um, just a simple partial uh, parcel shelf, right? Adjustable headrest, same as here. Um, six airbags on this high spec, non adjustable seat belts, seat belt height. That's kind of how you mount your seat belt. Um, Otherwise, standard. You know, window switches. This is looks good. Clearly plastic, but that's absolutely fine. Um, auto up and down. On all four doors. A USB. What is this USB A? Right? Okay. And standard pockets. Okay. So I am. 170 centimeters tall, short. Um, this is how much kind of leg room I have. Uh, sorry, height hidden. You can see it over there. <clears throat> and how much leg room I have. Right? So, very good. Tuck your feet in as all those and a car reviewers do and absolutely no complaints at the back here right so generally speaking it feels like a C segment yeah definitely not a B um, again look and feel the first impressions um, against Chinese expectation or perceived expectation of how Chinese products and qualities should be is tremendous but uh, do remember that you know the Chinese pace of progress in terms of engineering and um, just kind of the products that are churned out right now is, is anybody who thinks it's still lacking quality I think maybe you may lack the final level of polish um, as compared to manufacturers that have been doing this a lot longer, right? Um, but certainly not lacking in perceived quality, right? Um, you don't have hard edges anywhere. The um, even right here, right, as you come this way, is just to be expected. It's not obviously luxury car standards. Um, but yeah, really good. Very impressed. Okay. So let's see. We're at now at five percent charge. We came here with uh, what was it? Thirty-nine weeks to charge. I think we sat here. There about an hour now. Uh, so maybe that's that's enough. Get going, yeah. Okay, so we're set. I don't know whether you guys can see it. We've sat here um, for just over an hour, an hour and 10 minutes to be precise. And um, it's pushed out almost 40 um, RD rupees. 40 kilowatt hours. Yeah. Um, and we're at 94%, as in 94% of the car's batteries. So, yeah. I think maybe we'll unplug. And um, an hour and a half, an hour and a bit of sitting around is sufficient. 
So let's see how do we take this car off. Press on the brakes and then someone at the driver seat. What does that mean? Okay. We'll try again. Press on this. Okay, remove EV charger. I shall switch off the car here. can see this we're gonna press and stop charging is stopped okay all right Let's see if this comes off <laughs> I'm just kind of glad because when I tried to charge it at home this morning I couldn't take it off I was kind of locked and had to lock and lock lock and lock the car Okay, we'll put back this DC and the AC covers. Okay, there we are. Let's see. It says they connect and start, but we're done. It's all here. So this is your AC max 43 kilowatt. Charger number one. 50 kilowatt DC. Um, I read about this, I don't know how to explain it yet. 50 DC CCS and this is the one we're using. Alright. Car's charged up. Go now. Thank you. ABB. Okay, let me take a short video of this uh, Schneider electric charger. I read online and it's um, it's only single phase AC charging, so it max out at that 7. Point, what was it? 7.7 is it? 7.4. Okay, so, so it looks like it says there electric vehicle charging, a parking only while charging, plug in the socket step one, charge your car step two. Okay, sounds easy enough. Let's see, so I got the public AC charger here. One hand since oh no I got the covers on there we go how does this go in man oh it's not it's the other one there we are Okay, it says there if the light is green and blinking indicates the car is charging. There we are. Alright. Okay. Let's see exactly how much single face is working. So I'm going something. There's a whole bunch of chargers here. Too bad it's not um higher, but then again on AC this car. Or a good cat only accepts 6.6, 6, I think 6.6 6 kilowatt hours. Okay, so since the car is charging up here at a very quiet um, Gunting Premium Outlet parking, so this is the, uh, the Schneider Electric EV charge points. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them there that you can see. Now, since we're charging, let me maybe do a quick uh, walk around video. So this is your standard 
is uh, what do you call it? Um, type two, right? Type two AC DC is at the bottom, but since this is a AC charger, so it's only pushing out seven point something, but the car can only accept six point six kilowatts. It really is just a very little top up because I don't think I'm going to be here very long. Um, okay, so quick walk around. This is how the Aura Good Cat, cat looks like. I think in the UK it's called the Funky Cat. Um, in Chinese, I think it's <clears throat> just sounds nice. That's what my Chinese speaking friends um, are guessing why it's called that. So this is the Aura badging. It's a, it's a dedicated EV sub brand under Great Wall Motors. We're gonna see it shortly. But here we've got some very nice design features. That doesn't do anything. This is uh, just regular chrome. I honestly don't know where the radar is because this car should have one for its uh, ACC and all that. Okay, 18 inch rims, 215. 50 and R18. This is running on GT um, quality comfort. Most inspiring of tires. Same at the back, so it's a square setup, not staggered. Um, okay, so here's your uh, signal and reverse. It's down here. Brake lights, and uh, this is just with the. Uh, the lights on right but when it's braking this brakes brighter and you've got your the brake light as well so like i said the aura is a dedicated ev sub brand under great wall motors of china i think they are the second largest chinese manufacturer behind uh, Jili, which owns uh kind of 49 percent of proton now this is your boot my daughter's booster seat so you get a pretty rough idea of how um, big or not big the boot is but I actually think this car is a C-segment sized car right despite its uh, odd kind of bubbly shape um, okay you only have killer's entry on one side so only the driver's door which is uh, annoying you get uh, blind spot right and on this spec it's that uh, dual tone paint job on the outside and inside um, cameras here get a bit of a interesting mm, I don't know it's not a upward <laughs> tone it's it's an interesting design thing this one so it says the intelligent light there but all it does is just uh, auto high beam uh, on full leds doesn't do those uh, matrix kind of lights okay maybe we'll finish the outside first this. so this doesn't have the uh, hydraulic uh, struts that is nice I don't know if you guys can see it, the lighting is not very good here. Um, the engine bay, I think when I brought it to show my comment, you see there's a gearbox down there. Um, which makes sense, I guess, because it should have that single speed gearbox. However, EV cars are. Got your brake fluid, um, windscreen washer, icon, we've got the uh, iPhone radiator and your high voltage uh, cables, right? Okay. All right. Let's gonna go in the car. Okay. So standard electrics only on the uh, driver's side. I'm gonna just scoot backwards so you guys can see driver's door card same here now what's interesting is that uh, just to let you know this is a uh, soft touch soft touch soft touch 
this is hard right but not not bad quality hard it's good quality hard plastics this is actually uh softer <laughs> but here's where it gets hard hard uh, hard, 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 hard. No, this I was impressed when we first got the car. It really shuts quite, you know, it's, it's got a good substantial feel and sound to it. Really. Okay, so um, so soft touch here, but kind of doesn't extend to the back. Yeah. Um, I've done another kind of video inside. So here's the thing, <laughs> this car just bings and bongs um, quite a lot. And half the time, I don't know why. Half the time it's, um, you know, things like you get too close to the car in front, etc. So I've done another kind of interior video, which means I wouldn't do it anymore. But what I want to show you is, um, okay, let me just say this, right? while the hardware is deeply impressive uh, deeply impressive just from um just from a standpoint of of let's say it being a a well number one first i guess dedicated ev by you know this aura brand and whatever right so that's um impressive by itself but the consideration here is that because it's in, in Thailand it's the where, where this this particular unit came from it is the cheapest available uh, electric vehicle number one um, when it gets launched here as well it's um, expected to be the cheapest in Malaysia as well now coincidentally just yesterday the uh, Renault Zoe uh, the current generation just got launched here in Malaysia and now that's a what 170 180,000 uh, ringgit car um, and that's you know a smaller car than this right so that's that's let's say city car B segment um, I don't know what you would um, officially term that car but this one is quite easily a C segment yeah now um, size aside and of course price the um, interior right um, the choice of material quality right so durability we're not sure yet but i think definitely as far as the current impressions right not sure how long it lasts but as far as how it is right now zero rattles it's done um it's done 7500 uh, kilometers and again it is a rental car so um it's not a car that drivers would really take care and be super careful about right but um you know it's it's no rattles super tight even all of this is just really really impressive right so even if you ignore the fact that it's the cheapest ev it's a chinese product and um you know their first proper ev at that i'm i'm, I'm told it's a super impressive product right so you would kind of compare it um, immediately not so much with the Japanese and the Koreans which even in their B and C segment um, you know products it's kind of let's say a little bit more on the um, plasticky side right the choice of materials etc etc so you step in and you if you don't know how much this costs you're gonna think it's it's kind of where let's say some pretty decent mid upper range um, continentals uh, you know just in terms of the feeling right and the impression right so you've got this kind of nice velvety uh, I don't know whatever synthetic material it is this one I read so it's not real leather but you know feels absolutely fine the um, switch gears and this all of this is super kind of sturdy right it really just feels very 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 good okay all right um okay so hardware aside <laughs> this is really what i need to tell you guys right so the software now the software is a bit it's a bit clunky 
it's uh it obviously needs a lot more refinement um it's a bit more to be <laughs> kind of thought through so let me try and see if i can replicate this for you guys right okay i'm gonna just switch this without pressing the brake um and again your brake here is b r a k e right let's see if uh i can do that Oh no, I can't because it's charging. So I'll show you guys another time. But now what it says here on the dash when you try and do that is uh, B-R-E-A-K. <laughs> so it's just a it's just an odd spelling thing which, which should be easily um, kind of fixed, right? Now, um, other than that, you would see there is a RPM here, which doesn't make sense in an EV. This is nice though. Um, you know, it's like I, I don't know whether in, in another generation's time when there's no such thing as petrol cars anymore that um, you know kids will understand what this means or why it's like that, right? Um, what else? Okay, so you've got very clunky kind of non functioning most of the time but this one since i got the car i haven't figured out how to <laughs> make it function when it does this uh just change the changes the menu here right and this one does the uh you know audio right um it's got a good shortcut button to the mirror uh, the, the, the camera so that's good and uh, this one this one's odd so you would see that this is where the aircon controls are so that's fine right um ideally again i'm one of those that would prefer uh hot buttons physical buttons to control something like the air conditioning but okay that's fine um could get, get get used to it now the problem is when you plug in your apple carplay android auto which is right there it takes up this whole screen okay and then this goes away right so let me show you guys how that looks like. I'll charge, I'll plug in my um, Android here. So this pops up and see that pre-production hardware. Okay, ignore that. I'm guessing that's just, okay. Let's pause this one. Okay. Uh, all right. So see, so this is where the icon buttons, um, control buttons were. It's no longer there. Mm, and what you have to do is to press on this your home button go back to the aura kind of system right and then it comes back on yeah so then you can change your icon and everything and you gonna go back here now the problem the other the second problem i find uh, at least for me is that while you're in you know android auto apple carplay or whatever and you're on your maps right and you're looking at your maps where where you, you want to go so in uh, when the car is just started what you're going to see is just uh this which is again the, the this is the default um home which is uh fine if you're in thailand right so this is this is fine right it, it just shows uh, it's an android system by the way there um at least that's why i'm guessing based on how it looks like right so then you've got to go here and it starts with this screen without um Kind of any pass open things uh, apps open so you go to vehicle settings and the annoying thing is that what? start the vehicle i'm gonna try and start it okay it's not working i'm gonna probably come back and uh show you guys again Time to full 245. What's this doing? Okay, break. Okay, remove EV charger. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, finish this very quickly. I'll open the doors, get some air in while I show you guys. Some the icons come back on. Okay, let me quickly show you guys, right? So, this is what's annoying. Um, Hmm. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to do this later to show you what's. So we'll we'll continue with the uh, annoying uh, buggy software on the Aura Good Cat right after this. 
Okay, so I figured out. Um, <laughs> I'll show you guys that one. The thing was when the car is charging, is uh, it just limits the functionality of certain kind of settings, right? Anyways, let's uh, continue. What I wanted to show you guys was this. So every time you restart the car, it pretty much resets to uh, a default um, setting. So certain things kind of stay in there, like this, for example. Um, so you get uh, some of this stuff here. Da da da. Um, light delay. Okay, wireless charging for <laughs> some reason every time you start the car you have to switch it back on okay the wireless charger is down yeah at first i thought this would be this this was a wireless charger as well but i think it's just a uh i don't know maybe when you put your um key okay seat setting there is a uh, driver's seat massage honestly tried it on the first day never used it anymore after that okay this is where most of the um, system resides okay a couple of again um, uh, what I want to talk about is the the kind of software calibration right so this car has pretty much everything right at least this stock uh, top spec version okay um, but before I go through the specs this one also just kind of every time you restart right it, it has this on and for everyone who who's has this in their car likelihood is you're going to switch this off right because for various reasons just the marking isn't clear the car kind of pulls you back into your lane when you actually want to change even though you're signaling um and so on and so forth uh wisdom dodge which is supposed to to, to kind of give you more space from uh, let's just say a large vehicle in the next lane etc i haven't really used that but this one always stays on now this lane keep assist uh you've got three settings here right and again none of this is available on a physical button here or here there's no physical button you have to use it within excuse me this screen right so lane departure warning right just regular warning lane keep assist is uh to kind of keep you back uh, from crossing the lines right which is kind of what the annoying thing is lane center assist is super useful especially on long distance and uh i feel it's it's one of the biggest things i use in um traffic jams right because this car has a uh, well, I wouldn't say stop and go because it will stop, but it wouldn't go. You have to press this restore button right here, then the car will go again. But its lane center assist only seems to kick in at 60 kilometers. So below 60 kilometers an hour, you have no lane center assist, right? Um, lane keep assist i'm not sure but this is fine with me because i don't like to switch it on but i would really like lane center assist to come on um from zero right the, the car unlike some others that i've tested the uh, car stays right in the center of lane which is good um but it only does it from 60 kilometers an hour right now um right side assist this is this is standard i'll leave it on traffic light uh, tra sorry traffic sign recognition works decently well although when it comes on it comes on with a sign here but then it kind of doesn't stay there right so it goes away very quickly um over speed ally, I never use any of this cruise speed limit i never use any of this now the kind of other okay well let's let's finish this first right so parking settings da 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 usual stuff uh intelligent pre-cooling this again just defaults to off all the time others uh, has nothing it's just a reset all vehicle settings right which which i, I did on the very first day uh let's see comfort mode. Play flag in first. Play flag in first. <laughs> so that's the uh that's the thai um kind of 
to where this car is from. Okay, so the other thing I'd like to um, <laughs> talk about is this thing where I haven't figured out how to switch it off, right? When you are on ACC, Active Cruise Control, right here, it works decently well, although even at the nearest setting to the car in front, it still stays a little bit too far back than I would uh, prefer um, as compared to, let's say, the other cars that I have or that I've tried, right? So, um, now, this car has this supposed intelligent, um, kinda, let's say, setting, right? Where if you're an ACC at 110 kilometers an hour, now, um, as you guys know, if you're set at uh, a given speed, ACC will slow down. If the car in front of you is slower than the set speed that you've you've put yours on, right? But um, it doesn't slow down typically when it uh, kind of hits a corner, right? Um, it'll just go at the speed that you've set it. If there's no car in front of you, right? <laughs> Um, which can get a bit uh, jarring, right? If you're set it at let's say 110, 130 and the, and the curve of the road is a little bit too um, sharp so you'd want to kind of slow down a bit which is great, right? Uh, this car is supposed to have that. Now the problem is um, it slows down too much, right? So let's say I'm cruising at 120 which is what the maximum ACC is uh, for this car is. It cannot be set for more than 120 kilometers an hour um, it will break the moment you hit a slight corner and it senses that I don't know how it, it does it whether by by you know just kind of sensing the uh, tilt um, how much the, the, the steering input is, is what, what you're doing or it does it with the cameras but either way it just kind of it, it breaks right so from 120 it goes on all the way to 90 and that's just too much so so if you have a car falling behind you um, the car is really going to wonder why are you suddenly braking, right? And this is not a sharp corner, a hard corner. It really is just a gradual, you know, if you're on the highway this, and you get a bit of a gradual um, kind of curve to the road, right? It just breaks. And I haven't figured out how to switch that off. So that's um, another software calibration um, that I hope, you know, the, they, they fix it before it gets launched here. What else? Um, somehow this 20 kilometers, it's sorry, 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer on, on consumption seems to have stuck at 20. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, and because this you know, works intermittently, right? So it doesn't work anymore, uh, uh, which I'm sure is just a, a problem with this particular car. Um, and if I own this, uh, the, the, I'll bring it into the service center and they should be able to reset this quite easily. But because you've got to get onto here to be able to reset all of this, right? So I've just not been able to do it. Um, otherwise, yeah, I think uh, just the software is a bit buggy. I would like to see this change to, to actual kind of consumption instead of having to you know, go inside. Uh, here to see that, right? The other thing uh, is obviously this, the aircon controls, it, they could just leave this on perpetually, right? Um, oh, one more thing. So, Android Auto works really well, besides this pre-production hardware, um, whatever. But <clears throat> the Apple CarPlay, which is what I typically use to um, plug in right because when when I'm driving um, even though my daily driver uh, for for my handphone is, is an Android but when I plug it my cars into Android Auto Apple CarPlay and, and whatnot I prefer Apple CarPlay simply because it just makes use of the full screen right um, in my Mercedes it what happens is it's got that full 12 point whatever screen uh, size and Android Auto just uses um, maybe two-thirds of it where else Apple CarPlay uses the whole thing, right? The problem is when I plug in Apple CarPlay into this particular car again, I'm sure it's just probably the problem, um, you know, part of all the problems with this, this car software is that it uh, just lags ter terribly, right? So you would touch, press something and you wait a whole three to 10 seconds, <laughs> depending. 
before something happens so that's not uh, something I'm sure they, they would uh, not fix because it is quite quite glaringly a problem um, so I think that's it right but I have another few more days with the car I will probably likely I, I will uh, gonna do a summing up but so far I think yeah that's that's uh, the most of it to share my experience so far okay okay guys so I'm gonna try and do another um, walk around video simply because it's it's nice and cool up here in the Genting Highlands and um, I somehow gonna like to stop at this spot right here it's where this cradle rock is what they call it uh, is it's supposedly tipped up just right there and um, if you climb up there there's, there's uh, stairs that side that um, appears like you could you know, push that rock down but anyways this is just a nice clearing um, to stop and uh, show you guys again another walk around so I'll just do one quiet walk around for you guys to have a look at the outside I am not a hundred percent convinced with the design to be honest um, it's interesting it's not offensive in my opinion and if this were mine I would probably kind of detach all of that right maybe maybe leave the aura get rid of the good cat get rid of the uh, Great Wall Motors GWM right there um, or I think in the UK it's all gone right they just leave it empty not sure so I don't know um, do you <laughs> do you guys like it the front probably is the most interesting and if we go let's say this uh, three quarters view from here probably still okay a side profile is where I'm starting to get a bit uh, divided and rear three quarters well let's just say interesting right um, that's your fog lamp right down there now for Mal many Malaysian drivers please do not on your fog lamp if there's no fog and there's some fog here so maybe in this it's still kind of okay although it's not I would say foggy enough to do that rear this brakes front this brakes quite generic but uh, because you don't use the brakes that often you use regen most of the time right to slow down okay that's it shock screen antenna and uh, sunroof right okay completes the walk around Okay, so a quick uh, wrap up before the the flux guys come and pick up the car. Um, so I've had, I've used it for, so it came on Friday. I've used it for, there about five days um, through a mix of city driving, which is what EVs are inherently good at. Um, I've used it on uh, highways right so the car max would max out its speed at 150 i don't think i i might have pushed it for a short bit but generally speaking i was doing 120 um, simply because the maximum speed um, that you could set on the acc the the cruise control is at uh, 120 right um, i'm not so sure about the shape of this car because it doesn't seem like it's very aerodynamic and at high speed there's a lot of wind buffer right so it's probably not the not the best um, 
efficiency wise right when at when at high speed so again you know uh, city driving that's where it's at most comfortable the efficiency is great the um, let's say you know the whole NVH right um, is great at city speeds and um, you know just effortless right so even though on paper this is not one of those EVs that are super fast with uh, amazing you know um, supercar beating kind of um, stats but um, as a everyday use and if you are kind of used to driving a regular you know a B segment C segment uh, ICE car an, an internal combustion engine car this power heat right here is um, more than enough right it's more than sufficient um, you do get uh, in fact you'll feel that it's faster much much faster than what you would be used to but um, if not then it's it's certainly something that uh, you know you you if, if you're really going after the numbers then this is not the car for you so let's uh, do a quick wrap up I did some uh, math here right uh, with regards to this particular car the uh, or uh, <coughs> good cat or funky cat as, it, as it's known in the, in the UK so it has a this particular model 63 kilowatt hour battery I know there's a smaller battery but uh, I'm, I'm only doing the math for this this model um, maximum AC charging is at 6.6 .6. if you plug it into your regular AC um, home three pin plug that uh, pushes out uh, 2.3 right um, maximum DC charging is 60 kilowatts however so assuming right um, let's see assuming you are plug it, plugging in the car into a 3 pin um, at 2.3 kilowatts again right so 2.3 kilowatt per hour is about there about 4% of the battery right so for you to do 10 hours plugged into a 3 pin uh, wall plug you get 40% right so clearly if you're going from 0 to 100 again I'm just I'm just uh, really taking it uh, simply right that uh, your charging speed is uh, just linear from 0 to 100 which is which is obviously not the case um, you would do you need what 20 odd hours to get from 0 to 100 right so clearly not very practical a 3 pin um, a three pin wall plug charger now if you do a home box which is capable of pushing out uh, let's say seven kilowatts right um, then you might basically it's it's let's say 10 hours or thereabouts for 100 percent charge from zero um, and finally DC let's say you're doing 50 60 kilowatt hours you're really taking only an hour an hour and a bit right to get that full 100% charge and as we had already um, experimented a full charge with my kind of driving I would get 300 350 easily right but if you are more of a I guess uh, less heavy footed you could easily get 350 to 400 I reckon right or, or maybe even more so you would in a day practically never drain out your battery to zero and um, you would be let's say topping up I don't know 50% of the battery right so if you have that um, and if you have an EV you would likely have installed a, a single phase wall uh, charger a wall box charger in which case let's say you're putting, pushing out 7 uh, kilowatts but this car accepts 6.6 .6, let's round it up 50% um, you'll be plugged in five hours at night maybe and um, that's really more than sufficient for you to um, use in a day 50% so you come home at, at night you plugged in you wake up in the morning with 100% uh, battery right uh, charge and then that would really give you what 150 200 kilometers easy and how many people really would drive that right so I think my point of all this is that it's uh, you know as far as EV tech is concerned and this is likely to be the cheapest EV around it's 
it's it's doable right it's, it's it's certainly doable now you you would need a second car a ice car uh for longer distance balik kampung your you know foodie road trips whatever it may be right um even then if you really wanted to with some planning you could certainly drive an ev um cross states um etc but um i think for for the most part i would do let's say you know one ev one uh, regular car and on your daily basis drives you'll be using this it's a lot cheaper to run maintain etc etc now on this particular aura good cat i'm not sure how reliably is gonna, reliability is going to be simply because it's you know it's new it's uh, again the chinese uh, made uh, stigma is there but um, as far as i can tell it's a really impressive good product right so those are the i guess takeaway points for me so to sum it up again um, as far as EV goes, I'm personally convinced it is a viable, um, you know, mode of transportation even even now in, in Malaysia, which is clearly lacking a lot of infrastructure. Um, as far as the product is concerned, the Aura Good Cat, it's deeply impressive for what it is, right? Um, I am not too sure about the 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 shape. It's not something that I am. Uh, you know, it's enough offensive, right? And and some people really like it, but I think for me, it's 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 just uh, it's it's okay. <laughs> it's interesting. So that's it. Um, my first experience with a a uh, EV, living with it, right, uh, for about a week. And uh, I hope this video would be useful for some of you who are in the same place as me. Again, uh, caveat here: I'm not a professional car reviewer and you know I, I enjoy cars i like cars but again terminologies might be wrong facts might be wrong calculations might be wrong so use this more as a means just to kind of get a general understanding of how these things work okay so here's some bonus material for you guys we're up at uh, Sky Avenue in Genting Highlands. I have not been here since way before the pandemic. So it's been a while. But um, things seem to be kind of busy again. Let's uh, take a bit of a walk around. more of the food places so we're just gonna find out um, where to have lunch shall we do a thousand calories or more we're gonna have milkshakes with uh, with our meal. Okay, so this is my guys. Looks legit. Looks like how it does look anywhere in the world. Let's look at the menu. Okay, burgers start at 35 ringgit. Cheeseburger 40, little burger 25. Little cheese burger 30 and milkshake. So milkshake is 25 bucks. Man. All right. Price little 20, regular 25, large 30. Man, this is expensive. Hi bro. I will try the cheeseburger. Okay. All right. Um, Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought you were a guy. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> With the mask and all that, you know? Um, do you go ice lemon tea, you know? Sorry? Do you have ice lemon tea? Uh, yeah. Okay. I want ice lemon tea. No price? Uh, too expensive. Okay. <laughs> so for the burgers, this one is the standard of uh -huh. okay? Um, oh, yes. The Correct. The color one. So I will have... Um, Mayo, 
lettuce, onions. The raw or the grill? Sorry? Raw or grill? Uh, raw, all raw. All raw. Um, hot sauce. Actually, that's all, yeah. Alright. So, what's this burger and what's the other? 55 burgers. Okay. Okay, bye. Uh, grab. Okay. Grab is okay? Okay. There you go. Thank you.